I find it much harder to forgive, sometimes even impossible to forgive, when my view of the situation is that I'm the saint and they are the sinner. Sure. And I think it's so important to recognize before Jesus says that we should also forgive people who have created emotional, physical, spiritual, whatever the debt is. People have hurt us, so now they have created a debt for us. Before we forgive other people, that we recognize our need to receive forgiveness from God, which helps me remember the same grace that I desperately need Mm. is the grace that I should be all the more eager to give. Mm -hmm. And grace is not giving someone else permission to continue to hurt you. Grace is recognizing that you're human, I'm human, you hurt me because someone else has hurt you. So you are carrying burdens of hurt. And while I may not be able to have compassion on you because you've hurt me so much, um, that would that would be hard to just muster sure. up compassion for the person that hurt you. But I can have compassion on the hurt you must have suffered mm. that led you to making some of the decisions that you've made against me. And I don't even have to know what hurt they have suffered. Mm. But I can always assume rightly. Most of the time we say don't assume things. Mm -hmm. But it's not a far stretch for me to remind myself that person has suffered hurt because every person has suffered hurt. Mm -hmm. And it's from their own places of hurt that they would then do something that would cause hurt to me. Mm -hmm. But it's so important first that I recognize, God, I need your forgiveness. Because if, if I am hesitant to recognize that I need God's forgiveness, or I only think that I need this much forgiveness from God, if I only think I need this much forgiveness from God, then I just let that little tiny bit of forgiveness flow to me, and I have very little forgiveness to then let flow through me. Right. But when I throw my arms open wide and say, God, I need abundant forgiveness from you. Mm -hmm. When God's forgiveness flows to me in such abundance that he wants to give me in full abundance, his absolute forgiveness, when I let it flow to me, I can then let it flow through me. But so much of me remembering I have done wrong too. Mm -hmm. And I need God's forgiveness. It it shifts my mindset from I'm the saint, you're the sinner, to God has simply called us all to be servants. Mm. And I am not better or worse or worse or better. I am simply human. I'm a human who has the tendency to make mistakes. And when I can remember that I need grace, I can more freely give grace. When I remember I need forgiveness, I can more freely give forgiveness. And so that's part of this process. The order is important. I confess. And sometimes for me, when I sit before the Lord, I will say, speak to me, Lord. Yeah. Because I don't want to only bring my perspective to this issue. Like, speak to me, Lord, and help me see where maybe a word I said or a thought that I had has skewed my perception of this whole thing because more than proving that I'm right, I want to improve this relationship. Mm -hmm. But I often need God's help to bring to mind things that I probably wouldn't be capable of thinking of on my own. And so forgiveness does all of that good work for, mm -hmm. for the whole, uh, confession does all of that good work for this whole forgiveness process. Yeah. But also I think just for the sake of my heart, not for just the sake of our relationships, but for the sake of my heart, I like when I have things that I'm carrying in my heart that I haven't confessed by God, I'm carrying so much unnecessary weight. Mm. And I wonder why we aren't more eager to get rid of that weight with this beautiful provision that God has given us of confession. Why do you think that is? I think for one, uh, Duke University did a study a number of years ago that found that the number one killer in America was unforgiveness, bitterness, I'm not going to do, 
I'm not going to do what I need to do to forgive you. I think in my experience, and at times I know this myself, by holding on to uh, unforgiveness and a sense of justice, uh, knowing as I turn the page of my Bible to Matthew 7, there's a little story about it, I think, and there's somewhere coming up, uh, uh, it's coming up about a log in, in my own eye. It feels good. So I have this kind of self-righteousness by unforgiving. I feel like it's not right, but I feel like I'm getting justice now. No way will I forgive you. Mm. And I then may be in my anger, uh, not even aware to go vertical to say, God, will you forgive me? So whether that's pride, but I think there's a real sense of immediate justice. I will not do this. And that's neurochemically, that's a jolt. That's an upper. I feel all this power inside. Wow. It's very powerful. It's toxic and deadly because it harms the container, me, that it's held in more than it does you that I need, who I need to forgive. But I think it's very functional to, to not forgive. Yeah, I think um, that question specifically, why? It's a good question. Why is it that, that we're hesitant to it? I wonder if because there at times becomes a fami familiarity with that mm, weight. Yeah. Mm. And even though it's crushing us, like... I, I think of my own life, my own situations. At, at times, this this is crushing me. But at least I know what it is. At least I can feel it. At least I can, you know. Uh, and over time, that becomes familiar to the point where if I release this weight, and if I do what Jesus says, right, and, and take his yoke upon myself because his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Like if I were to do that, I still don't know how that's going to feel. And I don't have any familiarity with it. I don't know what that outcome is going to look at. And to some degree, I think it also means that I put myself at jeopardy and at risk because I don't know what the other person's response is. Mm -hmm. While I bear this weight, at least I'm in full control of what I'm going to do or what I'm not going to do. Wow. But the minute I, I open myself up, to allow this great exchange to take place, there is this moment. It's like a hand. I'm going to give you the football illustration now. It's I like a handoff. It's like a handoff with football. I teach my sons all the time. That is the most important time when you time when you do the handoff. You watch the football go into the other person's hand, and you imagine that thing going and being caught tight. Um, because most fumbles happen in that exchange because there mm -hmm. is this this curiosity. Is that person going to grab it? Mm -hmm. Am I going to release it? When does that timing take place? And I think there's a bit of fear that is wrapped around it. I think you're right. I think there is fear. And I also really like what you said, when we're holding on to the anger, the bitterness, the frustration, the disappointment, it does feel like I was powerless to make mm -hmm. sure you didn't hurt me. Mm -hmm. And now that you have hurt me, I am not going to put myself in a position of powerlessness again. Yep. So if I hold on to all of this, this proof of how bad you've hurt me becomes a sense of power for me to remind you, but even more so remind myself, I will not let this person hurt me again. And even though I'm unaware in the moment that I'm really not powerful, but I'm, that's potent, I'm impotent. There, I'm lacking power. It feels like all this power, but in reality, I'm really out of control. It's far more chaos inside. Mm -hmm. It's a false power. Mm -hmm. Because when we're holding on to the pain, the pain really, I, I've, I've said before, when, when the human heart lets hurt sit in it too long, it eventually turns to hate. Mm -hmm. And we can manage it with our words, but the raw feelings are still pain and if we're holding on to pain pain never grows and blossoms into yeah. beauty mm -hmm. it can only travel from pain to something else we have to turn the pain from pain to perspective mm -hmm. perspective is where the beautiful seeds mm -hmm. can yeah. grow mm -hmm. new thoughts new maturity new growth but pain can't grow that. Yeah. Pain is too toxic of a soil. Pain yeah. will only grow more pain is really what you're saying. It's right. exponential too. It just keeps breeding more like the root of bitterness that scripture talks about. But pain will just breed more and more pain, kind of like weeds do in my yard. I can spend money and time you know, to, to try to get the grass right. And in fairness, in case she's watching, which she will, my wife would do that. <laughs> she loves the, taking care of the yard that way. But it's, I do nothing for the weeds to grow. It's like they're resilient. So I love what you're saying. That pain will just feed like weeds taking over your yard, choking out 
the life that is there. Mm -hmm. And even though we do have this false sense of power and maybe even out of fear, like you said, Joel, protection, mm -hmm. like if I hold on to this, it'll protect me from not, from it not happening again. But what we don't realize is that it will leak out as a toxic atmosphere and affect mm -hmm. every other relationship that we're in because hurt from one relationship doesn't sit still and only come up in that relationship. It mm -hmm. affects us and it'll start impacting every other relationship that we have. And mm -hmm. it's a false sense of power because it cannot protect us and it cannot um, prevent that person from hurting us again. Yeah. And so, but I think when we allow the confession and forgiveness process to come about, just like what Jesus is teaching us in this prayer, I think that's where that pain can go through a process to become eventual perspective. And perspective is powerful.